Season two of The Mandalorian will be released on October 30th. Also recently released is the trailer, which we're going to talk about. We decided to binge watch the entire season one. I'm talking about we watched like nearly the whole thing in one sitting. We did it to prepare for season two. How did you like binge watching the season instead of the nonsense once per week garbage? (laughs) I really loved it. It really helped me follow along with it a Mm -hmm. lot better. You know, like I usually forget what goes on week by week. And I'm always like, Greg, do not skip the recap. I need that. (laughs) I always feel like I can remember it. So I want to skip the recap and the beginning music. And I just want to be like, (sighs) skip, skip and get right to it. Also, I yelled at you a couple of times. I'm like, do not skip the intro. (laughs) I mean, come on. You've seen it a hundred times. I know, but I just love like the colored helmets that they show. I think Mm -hmm. that's the coolest part. I will admit that I loved it way more binge watching. Like Mm -hmm. I, even though I remember a lot of things. Yeah, you're really good at it. Usually if I don't remember and if the recap doesn't help, I'm always like, great. What was going on? I don't remember. And you're like, (laughs) I obviously missed stuff. Uh And this really helped me connect more with these characters much, much more. Yeah, same. I feel like I had a way bigger connection with the characters this time around. So were there things that you didn't notice the first time around that that you caught this time? I think it really helped watching it again because from doing those last two podcast episodes mm-hmm. that we talked about, just knowing like the history of the Mandalorian, more about like timeline where the Mandalorian falls in the Star Wars right. sagas, and it really helped me focus more on the characters. And it really helped me appreciate Baby Yoda even more, I think. Yeah. I don't know how that's possible. Baby Yoda character is just genius. Uh It's it's just really a smart idea. Yeah. And another really cool part I don't remember appreciating as much either is the art at the end of the episodes. I didn't even see them the first time around. Really? I think that as soon as it was over, I was just like, okay. Yeah. After we get this podcast edited and published and... And everything, I'm going to go look online and see if I can buy some of that art. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. (laughs) I want, like, everyone to hang around the house here. (laughs) Also, I look a lot online for Baby Yoda merch. Mm -hmm. And I always see the one where Baby Yoda is wearing the little, like, Mandalorian necklace. Right. I kept thinking to myself, man, I know this has to be in the show, but I couldn't remember. And then when we rewatched it, I realized that Baby Yoda is wearing the necklace at the end. Because I know Mando thought, you know, he was going to die. Mando was like, oh, I didn't think I was ever going to see that again. And Baby Yoda was wearing it. It was really sweet. (laughs) Yeah. So it makes me appreciate that even more, too. Yeah, that's awesome. For me, I noticed a bunch of maybe weird stuff that I didn't really pick up on the first time. Because you're just so excited for it the first time around. You're accepting of everything. Yeah. Like, no matter what it is, you're like, oh, it's awesome. Uh-huh. You know, like your first impression is really great. Also, the first time around, we watched a lot of them during lunch, I remember. And I always have a rule, like I don't like eating and watching stuff because I can't pay attention as closely. Mm-hmm. So usually we watch like YouTube videos or something quick while we eat or comedy or something because you don't have to really like pay attention. But right. we watched this and we didn't really eat or anything. So I think that helped me. Yeah, we like, paid very close attention. Yeah. In episode seven and eight, there was a bunch of weird stuff. For instance, in the cantina, the client is talking to Moff Gideon, and then Moff waves his hand like, and that's when the shooting starts, uh-huh. right? But Moff wasn't on the planet. Yeah. So who was he waving his hand to? Was it like a Zoom hologram <laughs> where he had the stormtrooper people also on the hologram? Maybe. And they were monitoring it? That's the only thing I can think. Because he then came in the TIE fighter like after that, like me, you know, and it folded. The other question I had is, where did the TIE fighter come from? Mm-hmm. Is there like a giant cruiser in orbit? I mean, I would think that there has to be a cruiser in orbit for the TIE fighter to launch from. Maybe, but why didn't Mando see that when they landed on the planet? Exactly. This is the stuff you notice when you watch it the second Uh time. 
at the end of episode eight, they declare Navarro safe with like no concern, <laughs> like where Moff Gideon or all of those Imperial troopers came from. It's fine, Greg. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like they kept landing them and landing them and uh-huh. more and more. Like, where are they coming from? Yeah. Like, is there some secret Imperial base somewhere else on the planet somewhere? Because they did say Navarro was held by Imperial until the end of the war. Yeah. Like the uh, Emperor, mm-hmm. the, the Empire until the end of the war. I also thought that Moff was Moff Gideon's first name Mm -hmm. and it didn't even cross my mind, but Moff was actually a rank that's held by the sector governors in the galactic empire. Oh yeah. So if somebody's in charge of like an area of space, they're a Moff. I would think somebody in charge of an area of space is going to have lots of cruisers and different big ships. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why didn't he call for help? That whole scene to me is weird. In episode seven, the troopers on the speeder bikes hear Mando on the communications device ask Kuil if he's back at the ship and if not, to hurry up. How did the troopers hear it? But Moff Gideon still doesn't know where Baby Yoda's at. Like, he doesn't know. Did he not know? No, he doesn't know. If he did know, why didn't he kill everybody in the cantina? Because he doesn't care. Yeah. Like he Obviously, needs he needs them mm-hmm. to tell them where Baby Yoda is. But the speeder bike troopers like, oh, let's go catch him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I didn't notice when Mando gave away the location to Baby Yoda either. I Mm-mm. totally, I don't remember that at all from the first time we watched it. I didn't. No. And it still gives me the sad feels when Kiel dies. Like, even though I was expecting it, just watching that for the second time, I was just like, uh. It makes me mad at Mando. Yeah. I mean, has Mando never heard of like communication security? Did Kiel give Mando an Imperial comms device that he had back when he was <gasps> working with the Empire, oh. like on accident? Like, are they that stupid? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff, you know, when I watched the first time, I was like, ooh. But the second time, I really paid attention to what Mm -hmm. was going on. And there was a lot of inconsistencies in the story itself. Fun, but the storytelling, to me, left a lot to be desired. At least it's seven and eight. Like, the rest of the episodes were really cool. But seven and eight were also cool. But had plot holes like everywhere. Little bits, yeah. Yeah. 